what's this Wordle thing that everybody keeps talking about? I keep seeing articles all over the place. It's literally everywhere. Man, it looks like the New York Times just bought it for a few million. That's crazy. And then now there's clones being made and even one in Google Sheets, but they're using formulas? It's not a very great experience at all. We can totally do better. In Google Sheets, you can create custom menu options and custom sidebars and take that input and put it back into the spreadsheet. Yeah, I think we should just make our own. Let's do it. Hey everyone, I'm a guy called Joe and today we're gonna to be making a full-fledged word game in Google Sheets and App Scripts using similar logic from the popular game Wordle. Since this is a game, there's gonna be a lot of different techniques that go into this, including dynamically inserting new sheets, resizing cells, reformatting them, doing text alignments, grabbing data from a completely different spreadsheet, inserting a new custom menu option, creating a custom sidebar, passing data between the sidebar to the spreadsheet, creating HTML template files, as well as a bunch of different JavaScript methods that we're gonna to use to create our game logic. I personally had a lot of fun creating this game, and all the things that I'm gonna show you are things that you can reuse which makes this a great way to learn and explore all the different capabilities that Google Apps Script has to offer. So the first thing we're gonna do is to create our game sheet. Um, to do that, we're going to insert a brand new sheet into our spreadsheet, and then we're gonna name that game sheet. And from there, we're going to remove any of the unneeded columns and rows. This is a word game that only has five letters. We can remove all the columns that are after column E. And then for the rows, you only get six attempts. So we'll remove anything that's past row six. From there, we'll set the widths and the height of our cells to be 50-50, a nice square. And then we're going to set the font size over to 28. So this is easy to read for the user. Now the next thing we're going to programmatic set is the text alignment. So we're going to want the vertical alignment to be set to middle and then the text alignment to be set to center. In order to do this, we have to use a special function that Google Apps Scripts provides to us called set vertical alignments and set horizontal alignments. This accepts a nested data array similar to how if you were writing data to the spreadsheet in bulk, you would need that nested array. So for this, we're going to create a for loop that's going to iterate through the six rows as well as the five columns. And then depending on whether or not we're doing vertical or horizontal alignment, we'll have it set each value to middle or center. And once we have that, we'll call our custom function to get the values that we need to pass through the set vertical alignments function as well as the set horizontal alignments function. If we run this, we can see in our spreadsheet, create a new one and everything looks nicely formatted. Now, before we're done here, we also want to remove any of the old sheets that were active before. So we'll create a new function for remove active games and remove it only if it already exists. So you have this function written, we'll add it back over to our main script and we'll give it a quick test over in the spreadsheet to see how it works. We'll remove it automatically and everything looks like it's good to go. Next up, we're going to customize the interface using a custom menu bar and a sidebar. So to do that, we're gonna create a new script. We're gonna call this the game initializer and we're going to set up two functions here. One of them is gonna be the on open function, which is simply just going to create the menu option and then add an item to it. And then the other one is gonna be called game sidebar. This is just going to use an HTML template uh, that we're going to create in a little bit which we're gonna call wordgame.html. Within our wordgame.html file, we just print out hello world. So when we go back to our spreadsheet and refresh it, click on the game's word game, we'll see that in the sidebar it says hello world. Now that we have a custom sidebar, it's time to add some user interactions with it. So here we've added an input element, which is just gonna be a standard button to start a new game. And we're gonna write a new function to call our create game canvas and that's going to use google.script.run and then the function. So going back over to our spreadsheet, we'll open up the sidebar we can see the new button. We click on it and we can see that it deletes the sheet and then it creates a new sheet with all the formatting. Now when you initially load in the sidebar and you click an interaction, it could take a little bit of time to load. So to give the user experience a little uplift here, we're going to add in some text for loading so that once the user clicks on a button or interacts with our sidebar, we can let them know that something is happening and that nothing is just frozen. So to run this, we'll pass in a with success handler into our Google script run. And what that'll essentially do is after the create game canvas is uh, successfully ran, it'll run this new function that we loaded in. So which also means that we need to call this create game loading state function a little earlier. So before we create the game canvas to set the loading text. And then once it's finished, we will set the text back to null or blank. 
And now let's give this a quick test before we move over to the next section, which is collecting user inputs. For our user inputs, we're going to be using a form. So we're going to have two different form fields in it. The first one is just going to be a text field to allow the user to enter in a word. And then the second one is going to be a button just to let the user submit the word that they entered into the text field. So we have this, let's refresh our sidebar and we can see here we got two sections within our form fields. Now we need to attach this to an action. So we're going to create a handler form submit where the form object is a parameter and we're going to do a Google script run for the get user input function that we're going to write now. And so we'll create a new thing called game handler and then we'll put it in our script. We're going to make the input equal to the form object dot word and it's equal to word because of what we actually called it when we were creating the field within the form fields. So here we also want to do a little something with it. So we'll do an import user input and we're just going to do the typical spreadsheet grab here. So we're going to get the range, we're going to get the word, we're going to split that up into an array, and then we're going to set that value over to our spreadsheet over here. So now as the user enters in a word and hits the submit button or the enter button, it'll go right into the spreadsheet. To improve the user experience, we're also going to want to validate what the user put in. Since we only expect a word of five characters, we're going to do a quick test here for the word's length to make sure that it is equal to five. If it is, then great. If it's not, we're going to give them an error message that says they should enter in a five letter word. We're going to provide a status back to us so that we can utilize this within our get user input function and make sure that we don't do anything with it if it fails our validations. Another thing we're going to want to do is provide the message to the user. So we'll add in a new paragraph text within our sidebar and we'll call this provide user feedback, which will set to replace the content within the paragraph element by utilizing the ID feedback. We're also going to use a success handler here to pass the object through so that it only executes after someone has successfully submitted the word through the UI. And now for the main game logic. First thing we're going to need to do is to grab the word of the day, which we're going to create this new function. It's going to go out to a completely different spreadsheet that holds all of our words in the word bank and then picks one every single day. So we grab that and then we're going to apply this to our get user input script over here, this function, so that we can actually use that to evaluate the user's input. So we're going to create a different function here to evaluate the user's input. We're going to get the last entry, which is just by querying the sheet for the most recently updated row. And then we're going to take their entry and then parse that out into a single level array. And then from there, we're going to loop through the user's word character by character and then try to see if that matches any of the letters within the word of the day. We're going to get the match index. And if it does match the same exact position, then we're going to say that it uh, the color should be equal to the match color. We're going to add in an object for colors here so that we have the green, the yellow, and then the gray. We're going to do the same thing for everything else. Uh, so for the yellow one, we're going to see if the matches are greater than zero. And if it's not, then there's no match, so it's gray. Now, in order to set the background colors, we're going to be using a function called set backgrounds, which is something that Google Apps Script provides to us. In order to send the data through, it needs to be in a nested array, similar to how we did the text alignments earlier. That's why we're going to have the evaluation array, and then we're going to put the colors into that and replace it as necessary. So once we run this, we're going to use test as the first name, and that's going to enter in and give the colors. And then let's try steal now. And that's going to give us three matches, one partial match, and one no match. And now it's time to see if you're a winner, winner, chicken dinner, or if you're a loser. And to do that, we're going to create a new function called evaluate winner. We're going to grab the latest entry from the spreadsheet, and then we're going to compare that to the word of the day. If it's a match, then great, you're a winner. Uh, otherwise, we're going to check to see if the number of rows entered is also equal to the number of max rows, which is six. And if that is the case, then that means you're a loser. And then there's always that edge case where you still have more turns left. So we're going to count the number of tries that you still have remaining in the six tries and then pass that back as a message so that the user knows how many tries they have left over. And let's give that a quick test. See, make sure everything works and we are a winner. So everything looks to be working. Now let's go back to our code and make it better. 
Now, one of the first things we're going to do is improve our Word game HTML file. We've got a lot of JavaScript down below. It could get a little messy. So let's copy that and then create a new file, which we're going to call script. That's going to be HTML file. Paste that in. And then within our game initializer, what we're actually going to do is add in a new function called include file name. And what this is going to let us do is going to allow us to have script files as well as styling files held outside of the main HTML file. And we're going to use an include statement within the HTML in order to pull that through. Quick test. Everything still works. That means we did it right. The user experience is something that can make it or break it for any type of application, especially a game. So some of the things that we're going to be fixing today is making sure that the user sees only what they need to see and not anything that they don't. So the first thing is the form fields. You don't need to see that until the game has begun. So what we're going to do here is we're going to initially remove it from the sidebar. And then only after we start the new game, are we going to load those fields in? We're going to be doing that by passing a form content variable through the same place where we were passing the loading state. Now, you might also notice that the feedback is still being displayed even though we restart the game. So what we want to want to do is to set that equal to blank after the game creating loading state is finished. So we just test this out quickly and see what we get. I'm going to put it in, get the feedback, restart the game, and it's no longer there. Now our game is looking a lot better, but there's still a couple of issues with it, such as when you submit an entry that is the winner or the game is over, you can still submit more, which we don't want. So in here, we're going to add an if statement so that we can check to see whether or not the values that the user inputted was a winner or a loser. And if it is, then we're going to disable that button so that you can no longer submit anything with it. And over here, I just actually made a mistake. It's supposed to be user input instead of user input form as the element we're grabbing. So let's try that again. Start a new thing, add some tests. Everything still looks good. Let's just play through. So we're going to add another one. We're getting three greens and a yellow. The number of tries we have left uh, is considerably going down. And once we win, the button is disabled. And now that we have the experience squared away, let's make it look a little prettier. So let's add in a style.html file, put in a bunch of styling. We're going to just do a couple of paddings and a little border radius for everything. We're going to include this in the header tags of our HTML file. And when we load this, we can see that the start new game button has some rounded edges. And then we have some padding between the form entry field as well as the button, as well as the feedback and our submit button also has a border radius. We can definitely get a little fancier with it, but this will do for now and it already looks great. Now this is a really fun way to showcase the power of Google Apps Scripts. If you wanna see what else you can do, make sure to check out this playlist where we show you some of the other automation techniques that you can use with Apps Scripts.